The Federal Reserve continues to hike interest rates. And as a result, I think they just delivered a death blow to the economy. I'm going to explain this to you in one simple, fast step. Let's start by going over Jerome Powell's huge mistake. This is a chart, an annual chart. As you can see, we go from January to December. Now, this, oh, geez, I didn't write it up on the board. Well, <laughs> editor, help me out with this one. This is a chart of 1981, and the dates are going to be the exact same for the chart below it. On the left, we go from 12% interest up to 20% interest. First, what we're going to focus on is this blue line. So that would be the Fed funds rate. So back in January of 1981, it was at 19%, goes back down, and then it goes back up to 19% in June or July. And then in August, September, it starts to go down. And this is when you could say the Fed pivoted, just like we're waiting for Jerome Powell to pivot now in 2023. Now, just to be very clear, when you go into 1982, interest rates did go back up slightly, but they never went back up to where they were at the high point here in, call it July or August of 1981. So again, this is when we can officially say that Paul Volcker pivoted. Now let's go ahead and move on to this green line. I think you're gonna find this fascinating. This represents M2 money supply during the exact same period. So in January of 1981, M2, right around 1.6 trillion. And you would expect that if Paul Volcker broke the back of inflation in July of 1981, that this would have been a result of the money supply going down or at least flattening out. And we can see that's not the case. In fact, M2 during the span of 1981 went from 1.6 up to roughly 1.76. So an increase of 160 billion, which at the time was a very high percentage, a significant percentage of overall M2 money supply. So the whole point here, the main takeaway, is that as Paul Volcker was pivoting for good, M2 money supply was still going up to a substantial degree. Now you may be asking yourself, okay, George, well, wh wh why does that really matter? I'm not an economist. And that's a very good question, but we're gonna get into that in just a moment. But before we do, let's look at the chart below. And this is the same time period, 1981, but it represents, not mom CPI, but <laughs> it represents month over month <laughs> CPI, not to be confused with your mom. So in 1981, January, the CPI was about 0.8%. What I want to point out is right around August, September, when Paul Volcker pivoted for good, there was a massive drop of month over month CPI from roughly 0.9% all the way down to call it 0.2%. And then there were some fluctuations going into 1982, but it stayed at this lower baseline. Before we move on to more recent data in 2022 and 2023 that shows this huge mistake that Jerome Powell is making, which I think will lead to a death blow for the US economy, I want to emphasize that as a result of Paul Volcker's actions in 1981, the US went into a massive recession. So just to review before we go on to the more recent data. Paul Volcker jacked rates, we know, but M2 money supply was still going up and he pivoted roughly the same time when CPI plummeted. And let's remember, there's a lag effect with the Federal Reserve raising interest rates, meaning if the Fed raises interest rates, the economy most likely 
feels the impact of those interest rate hikes six or nine months into the future. So if Jerome Powell is raising rates right now and taking them up to, let's say, 4.5% or the, in the future, he takes them even higher, those interest rate increases are going to work their way through the economy over the next six to nine months. And then we're going to see the true full impact. It doesn't happen in real time. So what I'm saying is that if Paul Volcker would not have pivoted right here in July, August, September of 1981, the recession that he created would have been much, much worse. And in my opinion, this is the catastrophic mistake that Jerome Powell is making right now that is delivering and will continue to deliver a death blow to the economy. Editor, go ahead and help me out and let's switch up these charts really quick so I can go over today's data with the viewers. Now let's see what Powell is doing today and what he did throughout 2022 and compare that to Paul Volcker in 1981 so we can start to come to some conclusions or maybe assess probabilities that in 2023, we see a severe economic downturn. And I'm putting that lightly. So we're using the same charts, the same data points, we go January through December. But this time I remembered to put the year 2022. <laughs> and on the left, we go from 0% up to 5%. So we'll start with Fed funds. And this is fresh in everyone's memory, I'm sure. So in April, they started to raise rates. And then Jerome Powell raised rates at the fastest pace we have ever seen. So from April to December of 2022, interest rates basically go from, let's say, 0.25 basis points, something like that, all the way up to 4.25%. And I know a lot of you right about now are saying, well, George, it's still only 4.25%. And historically... I mean, that's even on the low side of average, and you've got a great point. But what you have to realize is the rate of change is incredibly important. My good buddy Adam Taggart has a good analogy for this. He says, if you drink a gallon of water over the span of a week, well, that's actually good for you. But if you drink that gallon of water within the span of a minute, It'll basically kill you. And that's what we're dealing with right here. I'd also like to point out that just taking interest rates, let's say from 25 basis points, all the way up to 425 basis points is roughly a 15x increase. That is absolutely unprecedented. Oh, but wait, there is more. Now let's go ahead and look at M2 money supply, just like we did with the previous charts in 1981 with Paul Volcker. So we start off, and that's M2 is represented by the green line, at 21.5 trillion, goes up and peaks out a little over 21.7 trillion. But then notice what happens. Right about the time, by the way, that Jerome Powell starts increasing interest rates like a madman. M2 money supply actually goes down. It plummets from 21.7 trillion all the way down to 21.2 trillion. And if we look at the charts, we can see that M1 money supply is also declining. So as you guys know, just by using some good old fashioned common sense, the number of currency units that are outstanding chasing goods and services has a significant impact on the CPI. Let's go ahead and think this through. During Paul Volcker's time, he pivoted around the middle of 1981, and the CPI came all the way down to a level that stayed very, very low into 
1982, and then as we all know, throughout the rest of the 1980s and 1990s, you guys know how this played out. We went into a decade, in fact, decades long time frame of disinflation. But while Paul Volcker was doing that in 1981, M2 money supply was not going down. It was not flatlining. It was actually going up. So what is the impact going to be when Jerome Powell is raising rates at an unprecedented pace while M2 money supply is actually going down? But unfortunately, we've just begun to scratch the surface. Let's go ahead and look at that chart of month over month or mom <laughs> CPI. It goes from 0% up to 1%. And keep in mind, this is the exact same time frame as the chart above it. So starting here in January, going all the way to December of 2022. So the CPI in January, 0.6. And then we go up to a peak at 1.3%. And again, this is just month over month. But then in June, it just absolutely plummets all the way down to 0%. Now, year over year, it's still very high. But just the month to month change, so from June to July, that's what the CPI did. Or maybe said a better way, in the month of July, prices did not increase at all. Whereas in the month of June, they increased by 1.3%. So the next question becomes what happened after we saw the CPI absolutely tank? Well, it went up slightly back to 0.4% of an increase in the months of, looks like September, October. But then in November, it went all the way down. And then in December, it went down to a negative a negative 0.1. So my main point here is if we were to take the last six months of the month over month CPI readings and move them forward, assume that the next six months going into 2023 will look similar. The CPI will have gone from, let's say 9% all the way down to roughly 2.5%. And keep in mind, there's a huge lag effect to Jerome Powell's interest rate hikes. Let's go ahead and review quickly to make sure we're all on the same page. In 1981, when the CPI crashed down right around that time frame, Paul Volcker pivoted. And we also have to remember that M2 money supply was going up. So if anything, this added, this gave a tailwind to the CPI, which I'd like to remind you, stayed at a low level, a relatively low level, going into 1982 and then throughout the 1980s. So I think it's safe to assume that if Paul Volcker would have continued to raise rates higher and higher and higher and higher instead of pivoting when he did, the impact on the US economy would have been far greater to the point where instead of going into a severe economic recession, it may have been an economic depression. So now in 2022, what has Jerome Powell done in the face of declining money supply, which should put downward pressure on CPI and considering the fact that CPI has gone from 1.3% all the way down to 0%, and in December, it's at negative one. Well, despite all of this economic data, he continues to raise rates higher and higher and higher. If he would have been Paul Volcker, he would have pivoted way back in June of 2022. And I'd like to remind you, that we have yet to see the full impact
of these interest rate hikes. And unfortunately, I think throughout the rest of 2023 and into 2024, we are going to see the economic devastation created by these excessive rate hikes. For more content that'll help you build wealth and thrive in a world of out of control central banks and big governments, check out this playlist right here. I will see you on the next video.